And this is just a quick little video of, of talking about stormwater runoff. Um, basically, you know, the rain then starts, it's going into these pipes, and this is a nice demo of showing how this type of system works. You can set it up either for uh, stormwater retention and detention, um, or you can set up for rainwater harvesting. Like this, this system right here is showing uh, stormwater retention. So basically the water comes in, we have this gravel base around it, they're handling the stormwater by keeping it in there and then it'll slowly perk back into the ground. If they wanted to, they could put a liner around that and then pump it back out for, for irrigation purposes. But again, this is a, just a nice example showing how, how the system works. Um, we can get into the water cycle here a little bit, but I feel like I'm, I'm kind of running along at this point. Um, this is this is an interesting uh, uh, slide. I'll just touch on this real quick because people talk about well, you know, pre-development, post-development. Why, why is it important to slow down stormwater? If you look at a natural um, area uh, with no development, you've got a, a rain of it. You've got approximately 10 percent running off of there, 25 percent shallow and deep infiltration. We're talking about recharging aquifers. We're talking about groundwater, and then about 40 percent. Uh, biotranspiration, uh, whether it's evaporating off the ground or through, uh, through plants. Um, and then look at this slide of uh, post development. Okay, all of a sudden we have 55% runoff as opposed to 10%. We've got 10% shallow infiltration, 5% deep. So when you talk about pumping water out of aquifers, why isn't groundwater recharging? Well, this is why. You get into urban areas where the water doesn't have access to perk back into the ground. Um, so this is, again, we want to try to keep the stormwater on site. A good way to do that is with uh, rainwater harvesting. So again, if you're in, in, before development, you've got 25 there, 25 there. You can see how you just can't keep up. It's, it's not a sustainable, um, uh, it's not sustainable just to pump aquifers and expect them to, to keep up with, with that. Um, this is also, yeah, this is for any of my engineers in the audience. This is also, um, when we're talking about BOPs, we're talking about vegetated swales, we're talking about cisterns, and again, things to slow down stormwater. Um, this was a study done down in Fayetteville with the cooperation of uh, NC State. But this is showing stream flows. So here's our flow rate, and here's over time. And if you look at pre development, this is brown line. So right here, rain event starts, and then what this represents is a stream flow. So the rain event starts, and the stream, you know, everything starts running down towards the stream. The stream comes up, reaches the peak of the flow, and then slowly starts coming back down. This right here is mm -hmm. post-development without BMPs. So right here, the rain event starts, everything hits the, uh, the pavement, and is piped down to the, to the local creek with every Thing dumping into that creek, it becomes very flashy. The, the, the water level comes up very high, very quickly, and then drops off. And then this is what's key right here. This is our post uh, event water level, where here's pre development, okay, because a lot of this water perked back into the ground, so there's groundwater present, so streams can stay higher. When the water is not perking back down into the ground, a lot of the water in the streams is trying to perk down into the ground, so stream flows are actually lower. So it, it, it's, a, it's a great example showing, you know, people, like in Colorado, you're not allowed to collect rainwater. They say that we want all the water to go in rivers. Well, if you look at the, the, the facts here, the stream flows are actually lower. If you just send everything away, then you know, their thinking is actually backwards. Um, simple things, what, what you can do. Um, again, our push is to keep potable water for consumption. Our push is on the non potable side. Um, toilets in the house are the number one water wasters. A leaky toilet can waste, uh, I think it's like 25,000 gallons of water a year, over, the, over a year if it's running continuously. It's a lot of water. Um, shorter showers, I am the water Nazi in my house. I've got a wife and two daughters, and uh, it's under five minutes, and the dad's pounding at the door. My, uh, my, my oldest, I should tell her, the city called, and they're running out of water during the drought. She, the last of that one. Um, um, this one I have to admit, I, I don't do. I, you know, I'm quick with my soap, but I don't turn the water off. Um, turn off when you're brushing your teeth, um, full loads, dishes, clothes, um, and then prioritize watering. 
And a lot of people are like, well, if I have a cistern and we get into a drought, what do I do? It's like, well, grass, I don't believe in watering grass. It's going to die. It's going to you know, go dormant in the summer. Keep your plants alive. If you have a cistern and you have a limited water source, then keep your plants alive. That's where your, your, your highest value is. Um, and again, our biggest push is the non potable side of things. It's, uh, it's easy to do. Uh, slowing down stormwater runoff, you're taking a liability, making it into an asset. Um, it's great for the environment. It's uh, enough said there. And also, too, water quality. If we can keep the water on site, you're reducing the risk of fertilizers, pet waste, and everything else getting washed in the streams, uh, which is, uh, is, is going to take the solids. Um, we want to try to keep those on site, let them perk down into the ground. Uh, sustainable, renewable, and that's it. You guys have any questions? Can you offset the pervious restrictions? Yes, yes, you sure can. Is um, one mill or is it just per site? Basically what you have to do is the engineer, the city engineer, has to tell you how much you have to offset. I got a call just on Friday. A guy who said, you know, I've got, you know, this I have to offset. I said, he goes, how does that work? So does the engineer give you the numbers? He said, yes. I said, okay, what is it? And we can talk about the best way to do this. And he actually had to offset 46 gallons of water. So I said, get a rain barrel and you're good. You know? So yeah, you just- so It's not a the rain barrel. Exactly, exactly. And what they want you to do is use that water. They want to hit it before the next event. So even something as simple as a rain barrel, you can hook up to a soaker hose, leave the valve open, and every time it rains, it's going to slowly buffer off somewhere. So yeah, good question. Any other questions? Well, you guys are easy. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I like it.